Okay, y'all, what's up? Hopefully this is working. Let's let's check it just to make sure, honey. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. I'm still trying to get this microphone together, honey. The microphone, the way that it's designed is it's just a bad design. Um, for those who make microphones, you shouldn't make the microphone with the lapel going this way because nobody's lapel goes like this unless they're putting their microphone in a pocket, on a chest pocket. All lapels are typically sideways, and so the microphone needs to sit sideways. If you have a sideways clip, it can actually clip on anything, and the microphone will stay upright. When it's sideways, it's literally only designed for some shit like this. That's it. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see. But it might be, I don't want it to be moving against anything. You understand what I'm saying? So I think I'm just going to order me a battery, another battery, another, um, because I want it to sit straight up. See how it's sitting straight up over here? But I turn my head this way so many times. And, you know, while I'm talking to y'all that I feel like you won't be able to hear me, but I think you will. We're down here. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, honey. We are down here, girl, to talk about Risa Tisa and who the fuck did I marry? And we're also down here in, in, in the same vein of who the F did I marry? Portia, um, Stuart, Williams, Gorbadia. You know I'm going to, honey, put the oil, oil the damn gears up because we about to rev this motherfucker up. Everybody, everybody knew, everybody knew something wasn't right with that man. Every single person knew. Is, is Simon even his name? Let's start off with Portia. You want to start off with Portia? <sighs> I played a video yesterday. I was like, I don't even have to post another video regarding the new updates on Simon Guabadia and his fraudulent scamming ass past. And the reason why he's being denied U.S. citizenship, you are a criminal according to the laws in the United States. So no, because you've gone and come back and gone and come back and overstayed and come back. You and your cousins around here buying these girls in Atlanta, Rolls Royces and things. And I really, truly believe, like I said this morning, I think a lot of these girls know a lot of these women like Portia and women who move like her, they know that these niggas money is not long. I don't know why you would marry them. I think that's the pick me part of it. But the I need to depend on the man part of it. Um, that's leaving y'all in precarious situations like Risa Tisa. That man was over there paying all the bills. I don't know who, where he was getting the money from. But that lady said that man lied to her from jump, from day fucking one. And she fell into a, when I, what I fell into too, and a lot of women, like she only dealt with it for a little while. And that's the one thing that I have to give her. Shout out to the girls who, find their way into these weird ass relationship dynamics with these weirdos and find their way out quickly. That's one thing I have to say. That lady went through all of that trauma in just a year and a half. I think about, I think about myself, all the shit that I went through, it was a matter of literally three years, really a year and a half because he was in jail for a year, a year and a day on a federal um conviction selling firearms without a license yeah so he went to jail for a year and a day we was together from 20 2006 to 2009 and he was gone for a year of that so in a very short amount of time you can find yourself on mr toad's wild ride of contradictions illusions and lies Part 32, who the fuck did I marry? 
And if you are desperate enough that you have been sold an idea and she kept mentioning religion, she kept mentioning religion. And this is when I got, I got really annoyed with her. Basically, if you were under a rock or on top of a hill over the weekend and did not hear this woman's story about who the F did I marry? And she got with this guy, got married with this guy, even got pregnant, had a miscarriage. Thank God. Remember, we just talked about that. I really think that instead of thinking that these miscarriages are your fault, you see it as a sign that maybe you shouldn't be duplicating the sperm that was trying to get to the egg, that got to the egg. And then the pregnancy was like, uh uh. So stop thinking it's your fault. There, I think there needs to be some, a little bit more spiritual deep dive into these women. Um, so many women with fertility issues. I don't know if y'all are taking it as a sign that the world is like, bitch, there's too many of these motherfuckers now. We can't keep making these babies until we get rid of the ones who ain't doing nothing around here. The ones who are leeching off of y'all and other people and other men and people just period. It's too many. And it's too many men who are just waiting for somebody to be desperate enough to fall into um, an illusion of, of lies and broken and false promises, empty promises. And you're just banking on, this is when I got mad at her. When she said, after he, she had caught him in several lies. Remember I told you the other day that, um, well, let me, let me, anyways, she caught him on, caught him in several lies. Even after catching him in several lies, when he proposed, she accepted the proposal. I don't brought him home four times. I took him back every time. I'll be damned if I take him back this time. So I got one question for you, okay? You ready for the question? You ready? Me. Will you marry me? No, no, I, I, not, I, I can't hear you. Say it. Will you marry me? All right. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh my right. God. <laughs> I'll be committed to you. I'll always love you. Nothing in this world could make me walk away because she's desperate for marriage one she is she admitted she was desperate for marriage one two after she was married she decides to i guess in as strict as she can follow the convictions of a wife and be this suffering wife with this lying ass man and then thinking to yourself that you need to honor your vows. And three days after getting married, you run off to the court to change your last name. You change your last name so quickly. He literally lied about everything. The nigga was even lying about phone calls he was on. And like, he was literally deep, like he needs a psychological evaluation. And I was kind of peeved that she didn't expose who he was because I feel like with a Yelp review like that, everybody needs to know who he is. It would be no protecting someone who caused you that much trauma. She was so, well, this is my marriage and I'm married now. So I'm going to stick by my husband and I'm, I want to believe the things that he said. I'm so glad, shout out to her, one, for sharing her story because the story, you can call her like not so smart, less than smart several times where you're like, girl. What are you not paying attention to this? There's so many filters y'all put over these men just to be married 
he was paying all the bills. Who knows where he was getting the money from? Because I kept thinking to myself, he's paying all the bills. How are the bills staying paid if this nigga isn't really who he says he is? He lied about where he worked. He lied about his position. He lied about being a twin. In fact, it sounded like he was taking on his twin's identity. Bitch, if this ain't a lifetime, Netflix, I don't know, Hallmark, I don't know. But the gag is there are thousands of women who have fallen into a trap of delusions, lies, contradictions, all to be married. She is literally like, listen to this woman and she vetted, he gave her a fake social, she caught a fake social security number. One thing I was sitting there saying, I said, every nigga that has been as close as he can to me, I have his social security number. Trust and believe. <laughs> I don't fucking play. I sure do. And and how embarrassing, like the shit be embarrassing. That's what I'm saying. I'm glad that she shared her story because she was with this man. It wasn't even two years. I think it was 18 months. She wasn't even married a full year before she got a divorce. He was married two other times. She got in contact with the woman the woman was like i don't want to have nothing to do with him just to let you know he's lying about everything she finally got in contact with his family members all of them if you would have if we would have known that you were about to get married we would have told you no the she went to a pastor and his wife to get married after all his lies you still want to go to marriage counseling i want to work on my marriage because when i got married i planned on being married 50 to 60 years even after he had been lying to her so it's like you still you have this fantasy in your head that you want to fulfill and it's like it doesn't matter who the man is hook or crook and you're willing to ignore red flag after red flag after red flag after red flag and then a lot of girls got gooped during the panorama they got gooped and ended up in a pandemonium they got gooped during the panorama found some man quarantined with that person and all of a sudden y'all love each other you think you love this person he's lying about everything lying like doing like hey yeah so okay so it's not there oh my god okay all right, then I'll talk to you later. Call me if you get in, if there's any changes, like, on, like not on the phone with nobody, like literally the man was living in a lie and she was living in a partial lie because she wanted to be married. It's really sad, but she's not the only one. And then all the signs on the way to the first date, her tire blows, girl, but he comes and helps her. What does she do? Fall for the hero. Girl, when a nigga saves you, girl, it's like, oh my God, he's saving me. He's helping me out of this problem. And then you fall into, I felt that's the trap I fell into. That's the trap I fell into, the hero. Mm -mm. Then the love bombing. Then the marriage proposal. Then uh, he's telling her he's a VP. They're looking at luxury cars test driving luxury cars. He's printing out things saying that he has trips planned for them. The houses, they, when I tell you this man was a person who liked to look at houses, probably trying to, you know, in a fantasy world and test drive cars and then lie to people and be like, oh, I'm getting this for my job. They told me I can get a car for $90,000. They're going to send over, they're going to wire the money. I just need to, you know, test drive the car. It can't be over $90,000 with tax and title and all this other stuff. I said, what? And this, all of it was a lie. Every single thing he, I think the only thing he probably told her was the truth was, was I think his birthday and his name. And, and then he gave her a nickname of his real name. I don't, I don't. I don't know. They found some guy. I don't know if that was him, but they found some guy. She kept calling him Legion. He was always, you know, printing stuff out. She asked him to see his bank account. He showed her a screenshot. She Googled all the screenshots she sent him and they're all on Google. They're images he got off of online. Like he literally, and it was, she wasn't swindled. She wasn't swindled. She walked right into it because she craved 
so desperately to be married. There are so many. She is a perfect episode of Oops, Wrong Isle. Like, girl, you had all the fucking signs. All the signs. She needs to be on Lifetime or something telling her story. But you're, you're going to have to get the other women that he's, that he's victimized. Two other women. He lied and said he was married. Well, he was married. He was married before, but he lied and told her that he was married in California. Lied, said he went to San Diego State. Lied and said he was on the football team. Lied and said that when she called San Diego State and they had no record of him, he lied and told her his father paid for him to be a private citizen. He lied and said her, his father was in law enforcement. I think his father worked as, as a correctional officer for a very short time. He had a twin. His cousin's and things were like, no, he's a liar. Don't believe nothing he's saying. He's telling us that you kicked him out. His, she had, the mother comes, right? She has a friend at work who took her to go when she had her miscarriage. Luckily, she had a miscarriage. Luckily, she had a miscarriage. You heard me? Luckily, she had a miscarriage. Everybody was like, you're so lucky you don't have a kid. It's when the kids come into play. That's when you're like, fuck, you could have really got out of this. But for me, it doesn't matter because it's just like, who, who, it doesn't matter, like whoever. But it's like in that short amount of time, there are women going through this who have been doing it for years, lying to themselves for years. And then you know what she did? She isolated herself. You know why? Because she didn't want to have to be held accountable and responsible for all of this, uh, 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 all of this acceptance of this illusion. Had you had your friends around you in a community of other women, especially the, the girls who are detectives, then you would have found out who they would have found out who this person was. But you didn't want them to find out who this person was. You wanted to remain in the delusion, even though you were getting spun forward and backward at 500 miles an hour, dizzy as hell, neck. You got to have a, a fucking neck sprain, neck strain sprain brace on because you've been going around in circles and round in circles this niggas te niggas taking you for test drive after test drive after test drive home after home after home even a real estate agent was like girl i don't know what's going on and why he can't show you he wanted to make an offer he lied and said that he had a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar pre-qualified for a loan right for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in georgia you what you know what kind of house you could get for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in georgia girl you can get you a fucking palace do you hear me a goddamn palace you really can so she's excited because she didn't found her man he wants to marry her she's a big girl she's not conventionally attractive she's happy as hell that she got her a fucking man who's gonna pay all the bills and she even ignored her intuition ignored her god in her the god in her your intuition that's god speaking to you that's energy speaking to you like girl no your body is rejecting your body is rejecting your car gets into a gets into a blowout tire when I, I i kept getting mad every single time she mentioned religion and marriage that's that is where y'all get gooped she didn't even, they didn't even really get married. They just went down to the courthouse. The mother didn't know her mother didn't know. I don't think they knew that she was pregnant. She was doing everything because she knew that if she included people in this, they would be like, girl, what the fuck is wrong with you? A lot of women, you isolate yourself because you know, like, this is crazy what I'm going, what I'm experiencing, but you have some other wounds that keep you there. Some other things that keep you there, even though you know and are fully aware that this is not right. When I tell you that man lied about every single thing, what got me is him being on the phone with his brother every morning. And his brother was like, I ain't talked to that nigga in years. He don't call me every morning. I don't know who the fuck he's talking to. For him to be committed. When I tell you these motherfuckers will put on a mask, that's why you can't vet. She tried. She, she ran his social security number. Nothing came up when she got his social security number again. She was like, this is not the same as this is not the same social security number. And bitch, she worked in law enforcement. That's the crazy part. Cause bitch, let me tell you something. If I, if you know someone in law enforcement, 
have them run a background check on these men that y'all are that y'all are going with. If you in any of these Facebook groups, discords, or anything, ask, say, hey, who's in here can run a background check on somebody? Somebody is in there that can run a background check. Ch trust me, because when women decide to become a detective, girl, we've got to find out everything, every fucking thing. And you you see how they already found this guy who might be legion we don't know i don't know i think his name was um what they say his name was jerome rome mccoy so maybe she was calling him rome because she said he had two names and she met she saw she matched with him on two different sites on both sites he had a, a different name on each site he had a different name i guess jerome on one side and maybe rome on the other one but he had other victims he had been married before he lied and said his ex-wife's daughter died she didn't die of covid he said his grandmother died of covid she died what 12 years prior like girl and then she said what broke the camel's back what did she say when she was like you got to get out she started you know she started she called san diego state she was finding out, she found out that the car he said was his company car was a screenshot. His bank statement um, was a screenshot. He would go like this and then show her a screenshot of a bank state, a bank balance. And then you got Portia over here where it says Simon, he can't get um, awarded a green card or citizenship um, because of his crime, his his crime riddled past keeps him getting denied bank fraud, credit fraud, identity fraud. Didn't I say if his name is even Simon is Portia's wedding legal? I'm going to tell you when all this stuff, when he, when we first met Fallon and Simon and shout out to Tisa tales, she was, she, when I tell you, she was getting everything on Simon when she was coming out with all her videos about Portia and Simon and Simon's nefarious ways of dealing in business i did a re i did a search for Simon and Fallon and what Simon and Fallon did i'm not sure i Tisa probably said something about this but what they did was when they were trying to you know introduce themselves to Atl Atlanta society they took out multiple ads in the spam magazines you know these spam like websites they have a bunch of ads like weird ads all oh, they're not even like normal ads they're like weird ads all over the place and then you'll just see a story in the middle of the screen but it's like ads just like weird saying do you have foot fungus and and do you need your home refinanced and just like random ads if you look up simon gobadia and fallon pina you will see that those that article over and over the same exact article over and over and over again in multiple publications and i call them like spam publications because it's like you don't know if you click on anything on their website you don't know if you're going to get a virus or something like that yeah that was that's what was going on simon is a scammer and like i said this morning i really feel like portia because you know portia's supposed to be coming back to atlanta i've said it for years portia moves like a ig model on on survival mode like she don't know what the fuck it's almost like she's running around atlanta still trying to figure out she gets with these men and she's another one she wants to be taken care of and i have a feeling that you found this scamming ass nigga married him and you gonna ride with him until the money dries up and then you're gonna move on same what what mia did that i don't i mean i don't know if i don't know if i would like get married in order to do that marriage would not be an option i would not legally bind myself to someone who is a scammer girl and if you know like i don't I don't believe that Portia is like, oh my God, I married somebody. No, she knows who she married. She knows exactly who she married. 
I want to read some of your comments from Tisa. I want to read some of your comments, not from Tisa. Shout out to Tisa Tales um, from Risa Tisa. I want to read some of your comments because I posted it on the um, community tab. And then we'll talk a little bit about Portia some more. There's nothing much to say about Portia. Everybody knew Simon was a scammer. We don't even know if his fucking name is Simon Guabadia. We don't know. I My theory is Portia knows everything about who he is and she just wants access to the lifestyle that if, if, and Portia strikes me as a type of person, it doesn't matter how long I can live this lifestyle. As long as in my life, I get to have this experience of this lifestyle, like what a lot of scammers do and fraudulent people do. Like remember on, um, Wolf of wall street, when they finally caught up to him and he was on that boat and he was just like living it up and he was on that yacht, living it up, but he knew his time was up. It's almost as though they, and you watch all these hustler documentaries, they know that their time is going to come to an end. They know it. They don't, they know that they're not going to be able to live this lifestyle forever. So they go crazy. They go ham. They go on trips. They do everything. So in their life, and on top of that, you're committing a federal crime. So when you get caught, you're not going to really do, it depends on how many people were affected by your crime, but typically in these type of crimes, there's not victims, right? They don't really have physical victims. It's more that you scam in the system. So you don't go to, go to jail for a long time, but you still have uh, memories of this lavish lifestyle you were able to live for however long in your life, in your book, the, the, your memoir, you're going to have several chapters of you living this life, traveling to Africa, traveling to Costa Rica, traveling, traveling, doing all these things with this man who you knew was a scammer and you knew that time was going to run out eventually. For me, I imagine PJ, I imagine PJ sitting there, watch, remember I told you how I we used to watch, children watch their parents. So I imagine the stories that PJ is going to have about like watching her mother run around like a bitch in survival mode. Like I really watched my mom just like she married this Nigerian man. His name was Simon. I called him Uncle Simon. You know how they do? What's her name? Monique got her son calling the nigga she fuck uncle. <laughs> Like, okay, uncle means that he's your brother. So what kind of dynamic do you think you're training this child where the man that your mom sleeps with, you call him uncle, but in real life, my uncle would be her brother. So why am I calling him uncle? And my brothers are calling him dad. Like, this is fucking crazy lady. And for you to even like try to train me to do that, this is uncle Sid. Like this shit is, y'all niggas is crazy. So I imagine that PJ is over there calling that man uncle. She better not be calling him daddy. She need to be calling him Mr. Simon. That's what she needs to be calling him. Y'all having your children calling the men that you fuck uncle is fucking crazy. End of story. Full fucking stop. It's weird as hell. It's call him Mr. Whatever his fucking name is. Mr. Simon, Mr. Legion, whatever his name is. Do not have your children calling the man that you're having sex with uncle. You don't understand what that does to them. When they grow up, they're like, uncle is my uncle. Uh, typically I would call the person uncle who is my mother or my father's brother. Why am I calling this man uncle and my mom is making noises with him in the other room like that? Like, this is weird. Is that my mom's brother or... <laughs> Like, I'm confused. Like, do you know what you could do to a child? Like, you will fuck them up because your ass is fucking sick. That's that's what that's the crazy part. I said, read the Yelp reviews. Listen to your intuition and don't isolate your friends, especially the ones with detective skills. Didn't I just tell you all to take more thought and you take more thought into picking your nail polish than you do choosing a nigga to marry? A 56 part, it was only 50 parts. You know, I exaggerate a little bit. 56 part TikTok about a woman abandoning all her sensibilities and intuition as she admits just to be married. Just to be married. She's not the only one. Do you know how many women are going to be able to identify with her story? And like I said, I'm thankful that 
she did not stay a long time. She, can you imagine if she was one, if she was that type of woman and she had that personality? She said she became enraged when he was on the phone with her mother. And they were like, what's going on? Why are you guys getting a divorce? Her mother is a God fearing woman. Her mother was praying. Her mother didn't really know what was going on. She didn't really say anything, but she just prayed. Later, her mother told her she could feel something was wrong. Why you didn't say nothing to your daughter? See, y'all, this is what this is. I know we want to mind our business, but if you see someone that is like literally, what are you doing? The, the miscarriage was a fucking blessing, girl. That was a blessing. And I feel like a lot of more women need to stop looking at fertility issues as some kind of curse and as a blessing because somebody in the comments said there was a story about this woman had five miscarriages with her husband. She divorced, he was abusive. However ways you want to describe, however way you want to label abusive, he was abusive. She left him, got remarried, got pregnant. Boom, just like that. I'm trying to tell you, if you don't look at the spirits, if stop thinking that something is wrong with you, it's literally your body rejecting something else that's coming into your body. What's the, what is changed about your body to where now a pregnancy is being rejected? What was the introduction? What was new? What was new to your body? Because if your body was fine before that, and all of a sudden there's, there's this egg that's fertilized with this sperm and your body rejects it. What was the new thing that came into the body? Because the egg was there. Y'all got to look a little bit deeper and stop thinking it's your fault. A lot of the times it's the sperm that your body is rejecting. I told you I was going to tell you the story about, I, I want to ask you, have you ever been meant, all of y'all, any of y'all in a sexual experience where your body is like telling you no, your body is literally telling you not to have sex with this person, not to be intimate with this person. I remember this dude, he was a small, I used to call him a white, white lie. He told white lies. I, I mentioned him every now and again. He's the Oracle executive. He would tell white lies. Turned out he was married. He would tell white lies. Every time, the, twi the two times that we were about to become intimate, one, I got diarrhea. The other one, I started my period. My body was like, absolutely not. You're not about to have sex with this man. Turned out he was married. My body was like, uh-uh, no, no. I remember my, I was like in the bathroom, like, oh my God, I was like so embarrassed. But it, I look back like your body was like, girl, I'm about to, you about to have, your stomach is about to be toe up to, to the point where you're not going to even feel comfortable with getting intimate with anybody. And then the next time, bitch, the girl, your girl started her period, went into the bathroom, period. It's like, girl. And then when I look back on, I was like, your body was keeping you from being intimate with it. Your body was literally rejecting this person, not getting close to you. Like, no, mm -mm, don't do it. Has that ever happened to you? And that's, that's twice it's happened to me. But when you think about it, when you think about people you've had sex with and then like, how there was like a hurdle between you and this person getting intimate. Was it your body telling you no? A lady had a miscarriage. Can you imagine if she had a baby with that lying ass motherfucker? She says she says she flew into a rage when he was on the phone with her mother. They were asking her why, asking him why, what's going on? Why are you getting a divorce? And he said. She says that I'm lying to her. I ain't never lied to her. She says she just flipped out. She was like, you got to get out. You got to get the fuck up out of here. I'm going to beat your ass like the bitch you are. In the time he had gotten injured and said it was an old football injury or something like that. Who knows how he got injured, but he got worse and worse. This nigga was drinking power aids, losing weight, staying in the bedroom. They, she put him in the guest room. He was pissing in the fucking power aid bottles when she went into the room to like get him out of the room to like kick him out. And she was like, what are in those bottles? These Powerade bottles, what are in those bottles? And he was like, I couldn't get up in the used bathroom. She was like, Oh hell no, you got to go. You got to get the fuck out because you know, it's really scary because you don't even know 
who this person is. Didn't I just say the other day, who do you fucking really know? Who do you know? These niggas will wear a mask for years. They will wear a mask for years. Let's read some of the comments. I said before that, I said, this nigga was taking her on scavenger hunts for houses and cars, riding around in his and hers fantastical world of lies, contradiction, and illusions. Just to be married, just to be picked, left your friends out of it because you know they were going to call you out. I'm really glad this woman is sharing her story because she's not the only one running around with dizzy eyes, abandoning and ignoring their intuition just to be picked by some lying ass man who lives in a fantasy world. It's the women who need deprogramming. Like these niggas that be on online in digital spaces saying that I'm married and this is what I have and this, I believe that they're lying. There's this dude, shout out to Themis and Thoughts channel. There's this dude that comes on his channel every now and again who says he's a nurse and that he's married. I don't believe him. <laughs> I never have. I was like, that nigga is living in a fantasy world. They present how they would like to their idealized versions of themselves, especially in digital spaces where there, where there can't be um, anybody like verifying what they're saying. You can just come on the internet and say, you're anybody and say, you're anything be on these chats, be in these group chats and saying, yeah, I'm a nurse and I'm married and this and that and all this other shit. I don't believe, believe in these niggas because I'm telling you, they live in a fantasy world. The patriarchy is a fantastical world of contradictions and, and delusions. It's literally an upside down of the truth. It's upside down of the truth. And the sad part is so many people have faith in the religion that powers patriarchy. I got married to this lying ass man and now I feel obligated to stay married to him and work through it because when I got married, I want to be married for 50 and 60 years. Bitch, ain't nobody be, ain't nobody marrying for 50 and 60 years. This is 2024. Y'all are literally trying to put an old operating system in a 2024 model. It's not working. It does not work. And the ones that are working, I would go out on the limb and saying, they're defective in a way because they're actually working when the model and the structure is not made to work. It's like y'all figured it out. Y'all must be doing something different. But the way that you guys are trying to conserve the way that marriage looks in this traditional way, did you hear Killer Mike trying to incentivize men taking care of their children by trying to sell marriage in 2024? What, what what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? You're literally trying to sell somebody a old ass Toyota Corolla 1982 and telling them to run around town in a 1982 Toyota Corolla. And then slap some like wrap paper around it to make it look like it's a new car. No, it's not going to run too long. It's already running on empty. And then y'all be down here mad and saying little things to me. And I'm just like, I'm just going by the evidence. I'm going by the evidence. All I know is that they need to expose Legion because if he's a real person, he's doing this to multiple women and he needs his face out there. I said, bitch, what if this story she's telling is a fucking lie? I thought that would be, I think that would have been so funny if the, her entire story was a lie. Oh, that would have been so good. That would have been so good. So good if it was a lie because everybody, when I tell you, them videos got 32,000 likes and like, like consistently people are enthralled with this story. Let's read some of your comments. I watched all the videos today. The story wore me the hell out. I had fell asleep on part 20 something, 26. And then I had to go back because I realized as I was falling asleep, I was missing some parts of the story, child. When he had hurt his, hurt his knee and she start, had to start taking care of him and stuff. Girl, can you imagine? And then you legally bind yourself to these niggas. That's the part that I'm telling you, the boy's father. Let's go down to the courthouse. No. 
Mm -mm. And I, I had just bought a house too. He was mad because I didn't put his name on the house so he wouldn't fix it, fix anything around the house. That it just lasts a year and a half. This lady just, I think hers was a year and a half. I think about Shia LaBeouf and FK Twigs. That was a year. He had her in a vortex of, of psychological abuse. A year. It only took him a year to get her in there. And it and what happens is women and men and everyone, you stop listening to your intuition. You stop listening to your intuition. You cut off eyes that are on the outside looking in because you know when you're in some shit, you can't really see what's going on you're kind of in a haze and it's foggy a little bit but people on the outside they can see exactly what the fuck is going on you don't want them to be able to see what was what's going on you want to be deluded you want to be lied to because when these niggas are down here telling you exactly who they're who they are all the interpreters and translators come out well what he really meant was no girl he's telling you exactly how he feels about you and you want to, like I said, it's the women who need the deprogramming. Y'all want these men. And that's why they tell you, y'all, y'all just want to be lied to. They tell y'all that. And I agree with them. Y'all want to be lied to. Not y'all, but y'all want to be lied to. You want to be lied to. You want to live in a fantasy world, Elsa. You want to be able to have your fantastical wedding that you dreamed of before you even understood the pathology of a man. You had your wedding in mind. So guess what you do? You grow up and then you're told you have to have a baby by this time. But you're also told you have to have a baby and be married. So now you're like, fuck. Who I need? So you go find any frog, Portia. You go find Dennis. You go find any frog to walk down the aisle with you, hopefully. Or he might just impregnate you. And now you're tied to this person. You don't really have to be tied to a person you had a baby with if you're not mar married to him. You really don't have to have any relation ties or anything. You really don't really have to be. When they be like, you tied to this man for 18 years, tied to who? <laughs> me a fucking break i wish i would ask a motherfucker what i had to do with my motherfucking children what schools they had to go to what medical procedures they need to have girl no i'm not asking nobody you didn't do you didn't do nothing but give sperm that's all you did that's all you did so you don't get a say in nothing nothing not in a goddamn thing you understand me and then y'all give these men power talking about, I want to depend on, you want to depend on an adult, another adult, a male adult that's been socialized in this system and has rejected his feminine. This is what you, this is what you're looking for. Oh God. Okay. I got you. I've been glued to my phone last night, literally all day tuned to her docu-series. I was emotionally drained by the end. I'm at a loss for words. Baby, look, I watched the entire series in one day. Sis can show enough, tell a story. She had me captivated. If it's fake, she needs to get into screenwriting. Woo, the story is wild. Home girl had the internet on lock all weekend. He's been exposed. Some of her storytelling was off, but some of it was relatable. Uh, a man will have you about to lose your whole shit over some mess. Um, someone said, it's not, I am legion. It's, we are legion. It doesn't matter what his identity is because all men, yes, all women should take this as a lesson. I heard the entire story. So many red flags and just shouldn't have happened. Crazy was waiting to hear what you had to say. Finally, someone said it, her story real or not was absolutely frightening. That's the part. It's scary. Cause you're laying with this person, having sex with this person, being intimate with this person. That's why I don't agree with just abort the babies because nigga, you're not going to even get close enough to me to impregnate me. Can you imagine your, your greatest threat? You being in an intimate proximity naked with somebody who can turn around and intimate partner violence rates. You see them, what they look like your intimate partner. This is the people that you're laying with, that you're close to. He's lying about everything, lying about phone calls. You think he's taught, you think he's such a family man. He calls his brother every morning. Yeah, dog, what's up? Yeah, we do it. You know what's going on? Hey, uh, Risa, Tisa, uh, Chris said hi. You heard her. She said hi too, bro. Yeah. So what y'all about to do this weekend? 
every morning he's on the phone with somebody fake. That's scary, y'all. That's not funny. It's not funny. I'm smiling because it's like, it's crazy because you never really know a person. And then y'all be like, bet, 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 bet. That lady vetted. She ran his social. He gave her a fake social. You can only do with what the information, you can only go on the information that you have. Now, ladies, you need to go look for the information. You need to go look for the information. Or you can be like Portia and understand, oh, this man is running scams. Like, how did he got a, a girl like Portia? It's like, oh, nigga, what are we doing? We running around town, riding in um, uh, luxury vehicles, going to open houses, looking at houses because we want to see how we want to live. If that's what you want to do, let's do it. How can we get some some money in here? Some some kind of fake ass money, some proof of funds. Girl, if that nigga was sit, trying to send a proof of funds, he didn't want to show. He wanted to put an offer on a home, but not show put cash offers on home, but not show proof of funds. Where and who do you think would do that? A real estate agent. If you a real estate agent who would take a accept a cash offer with no proof of funds, I feel I don't feel like I need to show how much money you just said that you're going to pay cash. So why can't we see where the cash is coming from? He lied. He said he had a Chase account, a U.S. bank account and an offshore account, girl. When I tell you he's living in a fantasy world and come to find out when she finally gets to talk to his family, he has a twin brother and everything, the life that he's a VP at some condiments company. What was the name of the condiments? Where do you work? Where's your badge? Like it's a lot. It's a lot of things that you're like missing. Like where's your badge? He says he's a VP. He has a company card. Lied about that. Then said, "Oh, you know, right behind this building is where our new offices are going to be. You want me to take you?" She was like, "Take me to your job. Let's see it." Because she was on to him by now. Like she's like questioning everything. Take me to your job. On the way to his job. Hello. Yeah, Willie. Um, is the gate open? You know, I'm able to get in, but on weekends, I know I can't get up to the floor. Um, my wife wants to see my office. Oh, you're not there. Oh, damn. Is, um, is Gregory there? He's the backup, um, security guard. Maybe he's there and we can get up there and I can show you where I work. It's so, you're going to love the view. You're really going to love it. Yeah. Oh, Gregory's not there either. All right. Well, maybe we'll try next weekend or, you know, maybe next week she can come up next week. All right. Thank you. Bye. Fake. <laughs> Bitch, fake, 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 fake. Shout out to Elaine. Fake, 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 fake. Fake. Just fake. Let's see what else y'all say. Um, I heard the entire story. So many red flags. Her story was absolutely frightening and a cautionary tale to other women who will be walking around in their slumber. Hindsight is 2020. These women are marrying anyone willing. They're not choosing. And that's the problem. No, they, I mean, like, I feel like there's multiple things with this woman. Like, I feel like that a lot of variables went into her accepting a liar. And I do believe one has to do with her not being conventionally attractive. I believe that women who aren't conventionally attractive will a man paying attention to them. They don't know how to act. They don't know how to act. And they're willing to believe whatever lie. I was like, what is, I need to see what this nigga looks like because I need to see why she was. I said he must have been a, a little attractive because you you putting up with too much and for you to just be on how are you sitting in cars all the time driving around to this houses making offers offers falling through he doesn't want to show proof of funds you're looking like what and then you're going on him having this letter from chase that he's shown you that says he's been approved for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars so he's going to buy us a house. So that's, that's part of the delusion, right? Part of the fantasy, part of the delusion. A man is supposed to have a house for you to come move into, right? He's supposed to be ready. And this is it. And then she kept mentioning her religion. She kept mentioning her religion and kept mentioning her religion. And that religion will have y'all 
in these marriages thinking you're supposed to be suffering, right? Because how well can you show a man that you love him an indoor pain, a level of pain that you must endure to show that this man loves you? And I, I'm y'all not doing your homework because I asked y'all to do homework and ask the men around you, why do you love women? What do you love about women? Right? And I and I want to see if is it labor or is it an individualized this is the reason why I love women. Not what they can do for you, but who they are. The internet found the ex-husband. Her eyes were completely glazed over in Delulu goop. And the relationship was like 15 months. That's the age of a the baby becomes a toddler. The latest news on Portia's husband is insane. No wonder she's back on RHOA. She knew there this was a, being exposed. Here comes the victim storyline slash divorce. It says Simon's been in Dubai, near Nigeria, most likely hiding out to avoid deportation again. Bravo most likely released this information after Portia signed in season 16 to share her life and increase the ratings. Girl, not only did they find him, he responded while the hobo was laying on somebody's couch. Since inflation, these hobos seriously need a place to lay. No vacancy. Trek and do the tundra. She didn't listen to her intuition. She didn't. I'm living in my Megan era. Ain't none of these dudes wifey material and none of them are worth the drama. Protect your womb so you don't become one of their baby mamas. I was going to tag you in TikTok. She said herself she was so desperate for it to be her turn. She's praying for a man. You praying for a man for a man. Look what you get. And then Tamika Mallory. Oh, we don't have enough time. I got about 10 minutes left. You old socialized, conditioned, social justice warrior. You're Pavlovian response to protect Chris Brown and have the nerve and the unmitigated gall to ask women to extend grace and redemption to men who are abusive to women and then turn around and say you didn't know nothing about karuchi tran so that tells me you went into <laughs> spun around in your fucking phone booth to save chris brown and if chris brown was in a bad mood he'd slap your ass and laugh about it and go home and make a sandwich that's the problem that i have that the the men that y'all go up for they would slap you bitch into whatever realm of delusion you just came out of to protect them. Tamika Mallory had the nerve to say, and I'm speaking to the women. What you asking women who are killed every five and a half hours by the men who are closest to them to have grace and redemption for a motherfucking nigga who goes up uh, upside women's head. And it wasn't just Rihanna. There's other people. Rolling Stone did an article of his past. Y'all be going up for these violent criminals, these men who do not like women and that will take any opportunity to harm you. Suge Knight, his raggedy, musty ass on the internet talking about why give an award to, um, why name an award after Dr. Dre and then on the other end, not let uh, Chris Brown play in a basketball game. Neither one of them. Neither one of them should have access to be rewarded, regarded, honored, or anything. And you have a lot of fucking nerve the way you used to hang people off of balconies, nigga. You disgusting piece of shit, waste of flesh. He's right, though. He's right, though. Suge Knight will hang you out of a fucking balcony, girl, while you going up. All of these men, y'all be... Y'all really spin around in phone booths for will beat your ass and will go home and kick their feet up and watch Club Shay Shay and not think one ounce about it. And then we'll get in proximity to other men and say, he ain't do nothing. I ain't do that. I ain't do that. And other men and women alike will believe him. I didn't do that. And did you see how Risa Tisa 
this man legion if that is him because it might be another nigga just lying and saying he is him because when i tell you he's not the only man running around living in a fantastical world of contradiction and delusion to reside in a patriarchy to to live in a patriarchy you have to lie to yourself you have to lie to yourself you have to but when you step outside of it and you look back into it you don't have to lie to yourself and you can look at it and be like girl absolutely not see the board bitch i see the board i'm not playing these game with these niggas i'm not gonna even risk it i don't even want to take the risk I would rather spend my life loving me and being around people who love me on a on a platonic level where I'm fulfilled through my friendships and my community. I don't need a romantic love because these men are weird as fuck and they've been weird and it takes you a couple times to do it. I don't understand how y'all keep doing it over and over and over and over and over. I don't understand how you guys are not dizzy. I don't understand how you guys are not tired, but I got the t-shirt, the mug, and the fucking magnet, bitch, and I'm good. I got it. I've been there, done that. I have a story in my book of life where I've experienced this, but I'm, I opted out. I'm not, I can't do things like that over and over and over and over and over again. And like I said, I'm glad she didn't, la she didn't even last two years with this person. But she even said out of her mouth, when I got married, I want to be married for 50 years. Girl, you 40, you 30 something. You want to be married for how long, girl? And you expect this person to be the person you met, knowing they come in with a representative. They show you they wear a mask and they will wear it as long. Then I tell you, they will wear it as long as they can. The mask don't drop off after 90 days for some of these weirdos they'll keep the mask on like literally hey bro how you doing every morning does he have an alarm like get on the phone with brother hey brother how's it going yeah oh yeah she right here risa tisa so and so said hi hi she thinks she talked to somebody he ain't even on the phone with anybody so you're like in this in in his movie in his fantastical movie you're just another character in his movie i could i just couldn't believe it. it says listen at part 22 where she lets us know she had his username and password and was about to use it and it was where she lost me ma'am you supposed to do you supposed to you got the golden key at the first inkling he was lying exactly she said they had each other's um passwords and she said he was in the shower one day and she went through his phone and he was sexting somebody but nigga and cheating on you girl lying to you his whole presentation is a lie and he's cheating on you and then and then so you married him right you went married him changed your last name now he's cheating on you sexting it was good hiring prostitutes hiring prostitutes she saw conversations with him the prostitute when when he set it up and then afterwards where he thanked her thank you that was great can't wait to see you again oh, this nigga's lying on you talking to fake people hiring prostitutes then that's your husband and god has given you this husband so you probably have an unprotected protected sex with him ain't no telling who he's having sex with and then you look at the hiv rates for heterosexual black women Don't get mad at me. Y'all the ones want to participate in this shit. Both from GA, no condoms, plus COVID. I know she owned her shit, but damn, those were scary times. She loved saying my husband, my ex-husband. It, it is. It is. And you know what? You know what we say, girl. Hmm. Hold on, girl. girl hold on you know what we say you you lucky i can't find it oh here she go but keep my husband out of it this these are the girls 
These are the girls. They anybody will do. They just want to say my husband. They want to say my husband, and they want to throw a dick. Yeah, it's this. These women. I, they want to say my husband. They want to say they want to throw a dick at you. They see their value. Tamika Mallory. They see the man's value more than their own value. You running down to the courthouse three days after you married a lion ass man to change your last name. You just want to be married. That's it. That's it. You just want to be married. You want your community to see that some man picked you, that you are and you have been chosen to be someone's wife. And that's more important to you than anything. My ex husband, my ex husband, there's no way after somebody does that to you that you take possession and use a possessive when talking about them y'all need to stop that my rapist my abuser my ex-husband call them motherfuckers by their names or say the man i was married to or the person who raped me or the person who victimized me stop calling these people who harm you my whatever they are my assaulter my rapist i hear that every time i hear People saying that about somebody who harmed them using the possessive, it, 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 I get so cringy. If you ever listen to the way I refer to my son's father, I don't ever refer to him as my ex, my nothing. He ain't my nothing. He ain't my sh nothing. None of them niggas are my nothing. No nigga I've ever been with is my nothing. They are that a person I was in a relationship with, or they are their names. But when it's a very important because words mean things. And I really want y'all to take this and, you know, flesh it out for yourself. But the people who have harmed you, raped you, assaulted you, abused you, my abuser, cut it out. The person who abused me, my rapist no the person who raped me he is not yours they are not yours stop it my ex-husband no nah, that man i married the man i was married to he's not my nothing i'm but when i tell you i don't know if it's i don't know what it is i don't want to tr attribute it to a sun sign but the cutoff game is real and when you cut a motherfucker off and you're not, you don't, there's no ownership, no possession there. The person who, the person I was, right? My son's, my child's father. This is my child's father. My, that's my child. That's where the possession, and even then, I don't even really like, very rare you hear me call them my sons. I usually say the boys. Because even then, I don't have possession over them. But because I live in a society where that's like the normal way to speak and not too many people are on the same shit that I'm on when it comes to how you refer to people around you, they're not yours. My husband, my husband, my husband. Bitch, what the fuck is his name? Does he have a name? No, he doesn't have a name. You want a husband. He don't have a name. It doesn't even fucking matter. That's why I tell y'all, walk down the aisles to yourself. Cause you don't even fucking care. You just want to say my husband. That's all you want to say. That's all a lot of you want to say. And you're winding up in these weird ass fucking relationship dynamics just to have a man in proximity to you to feel and to show your community that you have some value to you. What's weird about and con here we are back to the contra the contradiction. The man is a value to you right a man choosing you that's a value to you but these men tell you if you have more than one man attached to you the as 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 the number increases the less valuable you get so now you trapped in this idea okay i can only be with one, one man and i gotta stay married to this motherfucker for my life my whole life what kind of setup is that <laughs> what kind of goddamn trap is that and these niggas is lying, cheating, and then you have to act like an insufferable wife and you go to a pastor and they tell you to work it out. I'm not going to tell you to leave them. No, you should be telling them to leave them. Them pastors said that, that something was wrong. 
that they knew something was wrong. When she went back and told them who he was, when you go back and ask the pastor about how you should navigate the relationship and they're telling you to stay because you've been told to be this man's help mate, help him do what? Keep up a lie? Portia, Tamika Mallory, Risa Tisa, all these people going up and putting themselves for in, in positions to protect a man's image, to uphold a man's image, to, to, to say to your community, you're valuable in some way because some man chose you. Now you got all your friends. Oh yeah, I'm married. I'm married. They don't even know. And then you lying. Lying to her friends, lying to everybody. Cause you're trying to take your L's in silence. How many women have done that? T take your L's in silence, lying to everybody about your relationship. Mother comes to visit. Y'all don't get into any fights and you just found out he was cheating on you. But your mother can't, your mother feels like something's wrong. She's not really sure you're not sharing with her because you want to be married. You just want to be married. And what value is it? What is, where is the value in it? It's, it depreciates. And as people continue to do it, the, ex, the life expectancy of a marriage is getting shorter and shorter. And not only that, the people are, the, the divorce rates are down. They like the divorce rates are down. You know why? Because people aren't getting married. So there's not as many divorces to add to the divorce rate. Yeah, the divorce rate is down, but look at the marriage rate. Motherfuckers is waking up. Unless you're designing the shit on your own, the way you want it, following this, this rules and these structures, and then using religion, a father, God, patriarchal handbook to govern your marriage, you on your knees begging to a man for a man, girl. That's fucked up in itself. That shit is crazy. What are y'all waiting for your bond soul? What is his name? waiting for your bond soul waiting for your what is, it starts with a b it's a thing that y'all be trying to say like waiting for a man bonds bonsai waiting for your bonsai it's something i don't know what it is it's something y'all be saying i'm waiting for my waiting for my bonds no it can't be bonsai bond soul i think it's waiting for my bond soul. i don't know what it is but y'all be saying waiting for something it starts with a b and it's like waiting for a man. It's like, what girl? And it's like, you were going off of some fable in a book, like a fantasy. It's literally a fantasy. And you're praying to a male deity for a man. And this is who you get. Girl, something ain't right. Something's wrong in the connection. Something is wrong in the connection. But keep my husband out of it. My husband. All y'all want to do is say, keep my husband out of it. My husband. It's a lot of women. Tisa ain't, Teresa Tisa ain't the only one going through this. I've been through it. I've been, like I told you, I felt like I was hustled, honey. It wasn't as traumatic as this. It had some physical abuse, some emotional abuse. But the, the line, he was a liar. And I, and... Because I'm such an observant person, I caught on to his tick when he lies. So every time I caught him in a lie and I realized what he did when he lied. So every time he did that thing again, I knew he was lying. And I would just be sitting there like every time I knew he was lying, bullshitting, exaggerating. He had a tick. I'm not going to even say what it is. Because even though the motherfucker can't see, I know he's listening. <laughs> girl. Anyways, y'all. Take care of each other. Step out of the fantasy, girl. Get into reality. See the real, the real view of the things that are happening around you. The motherfucker gets you in a car and you s feel like the car is starting to do fucking donuts because he's taking you in a fucking carousel girl you starting to get dizzy that's when you say hey 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 slow down slow down slow down even if you don't get him to stop and that motherfucker only all it can do is slow down if you don't tuck and roll and get the fuck out 
<laughs> if you don't tuck and roll out of that shit and do a MacGyver and get the fuck out of that car because he's about to spin that shit and you about to be don't doing donuts in your luxury. What what she want a, a BMW with cognac interior? What she say in her trip to London? Girl, it's a lot of girls, a lot of women that can relate. And that's why so many people were tuned in. You know how many people have been lied to? I said, this motherfucker don't got shit on the Tinder swindler. He don't. He don't. But it's a lot of niggas running around lying to women in this way. And stop telling women to vet. She ran his social security number. It was fake. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm getting a call. I got a call. Okay, what? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, girl. Okay, I'm on my way. Okay, got okay, y'all. I gotta go. Ain't nobody in the phone. <laughs> just just miss uh but keep, keep my, my husband, husband out, of out of it. But keep my husband out of it. All right, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Peace. Take care of yourself. Share your stories. If you got any stories out there, if you were swindled and hustled by one of these mustard, rust and duster, let us know in the comments. Peace.